One of my goals whenever I preach and whenever I stand behind this pulpit is to pour my heart out to you. And, you know, it's, it's not to get up here and, and, you know, be entertaining or, or to, you know, try to sound smart like I know everything because I don't. You know, I want you to know what God has been speaking to my heart as of lately and what he's put on my heart for tonight. I want you to hear my heart. I want you to know that I sincerely care about every single one of you here and everyone over the live stream. And, you know, most importantly, I, I want you to know that I care about your relationship with the Lord. I, you know, that's something that I, I, I intercede about um, for all of you. And, you know, whether you like me or not personally, it's irrelevant because I love you. And, you know, it, it's, it doesn't matter. Something the Lord has blessed me with. And I'm so thankful for is the ability to love everyone, my friends, my family, enemies. Doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, your background, how you feel about me. I want you to know that how I feel about you is I love you. And I want you to know the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, last night uh, on the plane with uh, Pastor Asher... He uh, asked me if I could preach, you know, if I, if I was okay with that. And, you know, he said his voice, you know, of course, I looked at him and said, I'm never going to say no. <laughs> when the Lord calls, I'm not going to say no. And, you know, though it was, you know, really short notice, I, uh, I knew that it was from the Lord because there was a message and there was a word that was distinctly on my heart. And it's been there actually for a few weeks. Over the past few weeks, God has been doing a number on my heart. Um, I've, you know, I've experienced just brokenness in my heart. And, you know, actually my father said something um, about this. And, you know, he, he noticed that there was a change in my disposition and uh, countenance. And the last few weeks, I've, you know, I've been more calm than usual. Um, I say than usual because, you know, I know I'm still get excited and stuff, but it's, you know, it's not that I'm not excited for the Lord or, or, or enthusiastic, but it, it is something that's just been, it's been in, on my heart and, and really just affecting me and my relationship with the Lord and, and the sincerity and, and severity of this. And, when David Borg preached uh, last Sun or two Sundays ago, now his message confirmed everything for me, and you know I, I I think we hear things so many times that we begin to have an attitude of yeah 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 I know I've heard that a thousand times I you know I already knew that. I, you know, and I, I think that I think that we can all fall into that place and we can all say, yeah, I've, I've been there. I've been there. And, you know, what happens is, is that something very, very important starts to become something that we begin to push aside when it should be in the forefront. And then we can become nonchalant about this. And something I, uh, something I put on, out on social media um, recently pertains to what I'm talking about, and that is relationship with the Lord. You know, we've all heard it a thousand times. Everybody's heard it a thousand times. Christianity isn't a religion. It's a relationship. Hey, we, we've heard that so many times. And, and you might even find yourself here tonight saying, yeah, 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 I, I I know that, I know that, but do you? And that's, that's the question for tonight. Do you, do you really know? Like, I mean, for real, like, okay, so you know it, but do you apply the truth to your life? Are we truly, truly 
in an intimate relationship with the Lord? Are we truly connected to him at all times? Are we praying without ceasing? Are are, are we acknowledging that he is with us all the time? Because relationships takes two. Relationships take two. Two, putting forth effort into it to grow and mature. It takes two, discussing things together. It takes two, bringing up problems so a solution can be provided. It takes two. Spending quality time with one another. It it takes two expressing hearts to each other. It takes two having good communication with one another. That's what this whole thing is about. This this whole being a Christian and and living life as 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 a Christian, it's about relationship with God, with the creator. And, and that's something that has just been on my heart so deeply lately because, see, we tend to make it so many things that it's not. It's, you know, it's all about being in communion with the Lord. Man, how incredible that is. I, being connected with the creator of the universe. <laughs> he created everything. And we're... It, we, I mean, I don't know about you, but that gets me excited inside. Like, oh my goodness, the one that created time itself, the one that existed before time existed, is not only here, is not only alive, is not only real, is not, but he's living on the inside of you. And that you have communion with him, and that you, you can open your mouth. You don't even have to open your mouth. You can, you can pray to him in your thoughts. You, you, can, you can speak to him in your mind. How incredible is this reality? And how many of us neglect it? I want to open up with a scripture tonight. And there's, of course, there's many scriptures that can bear this out. But, but one is the one that he gave me. And if you go to your Bibles, it's uh, 2 Corinthians 5.18. This, this scripture, I mean, really, it's, it says it all. It's incredible. 2 Corinthians 5.18 says, And now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I don't care how you look at it and how I I don't care what it is or life. Everything is better with Jesus. And because of Jesus Christ, we've been reconciled. We've been brought back into communion with the father. Mm, hallelujah. So tonight I got a message entitled better with Jesus, better with Jesus. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together tonight. Lord, I just I thank you for the tremendous work that you did in Colombia. I thank you for all the all the people that were impacted and the souls that were saved and those that went through with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just, I ask that you would prepare our hearts tonight, Lord, that you would help us to receive the message that you have for us and that we would consistently be reminded of you in everything that we do, that you are always present with us, that you never forsake us, you never leave us, Lord. I thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word, Lord. And I just, I ask for your anointing. I ask that you would speak through me. And I just ask that you would open our ears to hear it tonight. Soften our hearts. And in Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen and amen. Now here it says, now all things are of God. And if 
if you don't read the verse before that, it, it really, you know, that, that's why reading things in context is important because the verse before that is one that we all know, 2 Corinthians 5.17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Now, verse 18, now all things are of God. This is why context is important because this is specifically speaking of the new things, the, the, the new things from becoming a new creation at conversion. Then it says, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. That word reconciled for one is past tense, meaning it's done. The reconciliation is complete. <laughs> man, that was a good time to give an amen. The reconciliation is complete. What does reconcile mean? I looked it up. The, de the dictionary definition is to restore friendly relationships or friendly relations between. Now, the biblical meaning means to make amends, come to a truce or settle a dispute. The Greek word for reconcile that I'm not going to try to say <laughs> means to literally exchange something such as coins for another thing. And my thoughts immediately, I mean, went to Judas giving up Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Like that's immediately where my mind went. Now, the last part of the verse says, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Through Jesus Christ, God has given us the ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. Man, this right here is so vital to understand because a lot of us get saved and think God gives us the right to pass judgment or shame people who aren't living right. No, God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I looked up the definition for ministry because I was curious and I really like this one. It says to live out the teachings of our faith by serving others, helping them grow spiritually and making their communities a better place. And examine your heart with that. Examine your heart with, with, with that. It, is that your intentions to serve others, to, to help others grow spiritually? And we can't help others grow spiritually if we aren't supporting them in their journey. If we aren't lifting them up in prayer or encouraging them. As I, as I learn and grow in my walk, I, I realize more and more and more that I am here to serve people. Yes. Uh, that's why I'm here. And please don't mistake in me, not as a pastor. <laughs> as a child of God. Yes. I am here to serve people. I'm here for you. Even at my own inconvenience. I'm here for you. And that's something that we all have to take to heart. See, the thing about this is it's not just for pastors and leaders. And no, this is for all of us. We have to serve one another, another. And this is for everyone here tonight and everyone over the live stream. As a Christian, this is what you signed up for to be a servant. And we are all called to the ministry of reconciliation. To give a word to whoever needs it or pray for whoever is requesting prayer. We are here to serve one another, whether you like the person or not. You know, it's like what I've always told my kids. You don't have to like each other. You don't got to like each other. You don't even have to like me. It's okay. But you know what you do have to do? You got to love me and you got to love them. Amen. Yes. Guess what? Same goes for Christians. <laughs> I know that stings. I know, I know. Trust me, trust me. I understand. Because as hard as it can be to love a, a, a sibling, a brother and a sister, man, it can be that much harder to love a brother or sister in Christ. 
but you are called to love everyone, whether you like them or not. And that's a word for us all, for everyone. <laughs> it's a word for me. I receive that word. Because I don't know about y'all, but every single person, you got somebody. You got somebody in your life. And see, that's strategic. The Lord, the Lord, he, he, he set that up. He set that up for all of us. I mean, you know, regardless of how you feel about that person, Jesus died for them just as much as he died for you. I believe that, you know, this will expose the condition of someone's heart. And, and, and see, this is why God places these people in our lives. It's, it, it shows us where we are on our walk with him. No matter how you look at it, Christianity, it's all about relationship. Relationship with God and our relationship with with others. Jesus gave us two commandments. Man, he broke it down real simple. Real simple. Love God and love people. I mean, when, when you do these two things with all of your heart, with everything in you, everything else is covered. Everything. You, you don't need to add anything to it. Loving God with all your heart and truly loving people covers everything in this book. It puts us in alignment with the Father's heart. And that's where we all need to be. In alignment with our Heavenly Father's heart. You know, you've heard that. You've heard that before. You, you have, you've, you've heard that before, but does your life represent that? that does, does the world see you and know you're a Christian without you opening your mouth? That's why I always give that analogy. I, I, I love the analogy of the orange and the apple. And if you squeeze an orange and you get apple juice, it's weird. It's just not normal. It's not the way it's supposed to be. The same thing as if a Christian gets stressed out and life is coming down on them. And, they, and I, I get it. But if something else comes out other than Jesus, it's weird. It's not right. Now, what I'm not saying is you can't have a bad day because that's not realistic. But what I am saying is your attitude that you have within that bad day is what's important. As a Christian, from the very second that we step foot out of our house, we are being observed by the world around us and other Christians. Our, our lives should represent the fact that life is better with Jesus, not worse. And, and no matter how you look at it, whether you're on the mountaintop, or you're in the valley. Something that really breaks my heart is when I, when I see someone who I know is a Christian and they're wearing an upside down smile. When we see a Christian or anyone who is going through it or there's somebody who's lost their joy, we need to gravitate towards that person and encourage them. Of course, being mindful if they're receptive or not, but regardless, we need to be here for each other. We need to, uh, we need to check up on one another and show interest in each other. Uh, something I thought about the other day is how can we lead people to Christ if we aren't walking as Christ walked? You keep reading and in verse 20, it, it says, now then, now, now then, speaking of you as someone who was saved, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Man, that's the word we have for the world. Right there. 
for everyone around us who doesn't know God, that, that should be the word we have for them. And, you know, I, I, I found this definition for an ambassador. It said that it's a person who acts as a representative or promoter of a specified activity. And then another one is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official represent, representative to a foreign country. This is not our home. This, this, this is not our home, and we are just passing through. And I, and I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm in a foreign place. When I look at the world and I see the things that they're doing and I see what's advertised on, 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 in commercials and what's going on on social media and I see what the world likes, I, I feel like that. I'm in a foreign place. And, and, and see, you can read that. You've been sent by a country, by the kingdom. Oh, come on. You've been sent by the kingdom as an official representative to a foreign country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not be conformed to this world. Mm, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you have been handpicked by the creator to be here in 2024, to be an ambassador for Christ, by him, for them, so that they would accept him. God is always looking for someone to use and move through. Uh, love God and love people. <laughs> no matter what you do or where you go, appreciate where you are and what you have. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be hard for me to not talk too much about the trip to Columbia. It, it, <laughs> he said, go ahead. But, you know, I will speak one thing that, that spoke to my heart more than anything. It was their, their praise and passion for the Lord. I mean, some of you may have saw that I, 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 I streamed some of it on my uh, social media so that, so that you could see, so that you could get a, a, a view into their world and, and to see their praise and their worship. I mean, I mean they, didn't just, they didn't just clap their hands. They jumped. They shouted. I mean, the, the way that they praised God, it was, it, it was amazing and it was incredible. And everywhere we went, I, I would tell them that I know that I, I came to minister to you, but please understand that you have ministered to me because you have encouraged me. I see your praise and then I go outside of your church and I see where you are and my heart breaks and it breaks. I, I, I look at the state of America and the church and in the world and I see what are we doing? Why are we not praising like this? Why are we not excited? Because we, have, we, we lift up a name, a name above all names, Jesus Christ. And he's alive. He's alive and well. And he's providing for you. He's interceding for man. I don't know. That just it lit something up in my heart. And I, and I I would I would stand on the side and I would watch them jumping and clapping and and, and praising God. And it would just break me. And I would weep because I would think, wow. They are barely making it. They're striving to survive. And yet they praise him like they have everything. I, I don't know about y'all, but that convicts my heart. And it makes me, I immediately started repenting. I immediately started repenting for, for, for myself and for the, the, uh, the, uh, the church in America, for the body of Christ as a whole, because I began to realize, wow, 
I want that praise that no matter what I'm going through, that no matter what I'm experiencing, that I'm going to jump and shout no matter how much food is in my fridge, no matter what trials is, is before me, that I can lift up the name of Jesus and jump up and down and get excited that my God is alive, that my God is alive. Hallelujah. 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 You know, I'll never forget on the last, not this trip, but it made such an impact in my life. I'll never forget riding with our good friend, Pastor Alfonso. And, and I, you know, I, I told him, I said, it's, it's amazing. I said, in, in America, everybody's grumpy. Hey, you don't like it. I don't know if the shoe fits, kick it off. But everybody's grumpy. Everybody's upset, discontent, it complaining. Man, people look at me weird when I smile at them. I get it all the time. But man, you go there? And I told him, I said, but here? It's incredible. Everybody's so happy. Everybody's so, I mean, joy. I, I'm talking joy. A joy that it doesn't matter what's going on in their life. There's a joy there. In America, we have everything. We have what everything we need and everything we want. And, and, and if you want it, you, you can go get it. If you want to be successful, you, you can. You, you can do that here in America, but in Colombia, you can't. And, you know, I asked Pastor Alfonso, I said, well, well, why is this? Why, why are we so discontent and grumpy in America? And yet, and we have everything. And yet here in Colombia, you guys are barely making it. And, and you guys have so much joy inside. And, and he said, that's exactly it. You guys have too much. And you don't appreciate what you do have. Man, I don't know. That, that spoke to me. That impacted my heart and changed the way that I viewed my own life. That changed my perspective on things. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And how can we be effective for the kingdom and, and lead people to Christ if we don't appreciate what we have how can we lead people to christ when we when we are always complaining instead of rejoicing i mean who would want to sign up to be miserable i mean it doesn't it do, it really doesn't make sense i mean if i i don't this just came to mind but if if i if you come in and i'm a salesman and i and I, and I, you know, you're looking at refrigerators and you want to buy a refrigerator. And I say, well, this refrigerator over here, you know, you can get it at a discounted rate, but it's, it, it's only going to last two years. You're going to be like, what, why, why am I going to buy that refrigerator from you're telling me it's going to break down, man. That's what we're doing when we're walking around like that. You need to be representatives and ambassadors of the kingdom. Uh, I don't know that what kind of example are we setting? You know, I, I can see the world looking at us and saying, well, why would I want to be a Christian? I got to give up what I enjoy doing and I'm going to be miserable. I mean, come on. That's just, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Of course they don't understand. I, I mean, I, I get it. You know, we all get it. You know, you're, you know, they're, they're fulfilling the desires of the flesh, but I'm just saying from their perspective, they're looking at it. Why do I want to give up what I like doing and be miserable? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't, man. What, what, what kind of representation do we have? Do we carry? You know, I think we represent our flesh more than we represent Christ within us. And, you know, I, this is, this is a word 
for the body of Christ as a whole. This isn't, you know, it's not like I, I'm, uh, I'm thinking of anybody or I'm, I'm trying to point anybody out or, or pick anybody out. This is, a, this is something that the Lord has shown me. And when I walk around and I see Christians and, and the trip to Columbia just had such an impact on me, their joy, their genuine smiles, man, genuine, not fronting, not faking it, really happy. <laughs> I mean, how many of us, how many of us put on that mask and go throughout our day? They don't. Theirs are genuine. And they go home to not even a, a, a quarter of what you have. And they're uncomfortable. And there's things about their lives that's it's just, I mean, it. It was hard. They have, and, and, and this is not me complaining, but it's true. I mean, they have 3G. All right. Hello. Wake up call. They don't even have a phone, cell phone signals. I mean, and, and how, how important is that to you? Because <laughs> you need your phone, right? I mean, think about that. They, they live with, with so little. I remember sitting in a service on the past trip, and they were handing us bags of water. Bags. Bags of water. I don't know. That ministered to me. Uh, this message that the Lord has given me is a call to examine ourselves and to make sure that our hearts are in alignment with the Father's heart. It's relationship. It's relationship. Man, I, I can't stress that enough. It, you know, something that the Lord has shown me over the past few weeks, and I really got the revelation through uh, David Borg's message. It's when you're in a serious relationship with God, the fruit from that will be prayer, a strong prayer. Life. It will be reading your Bible. It will be your church attending. It will be. It, it's inevitable. I mean, we don't have to strive for it. Strive for Jesus. Run towards Jesus. Keep your eyes fixed and focused on the cross, knowing that what he did there brought us back into communion with the father if you truly love somebody you'll never do anything that would hurt them it's true it, you naturally want to do things that are pleasing to them that's the way a relationship works and therefore if you truly love god You'll do these things. You'll read your Bible. You'll, you'll pray. You'll go to church. You'll put money in, in, in the offering plate. You'll, you'll do all these things, not because of what God's done or is done for you, but because you love him. And that's why I say all the time, like, don't come to church. Don't, don't come to church for any other reason besides you love God. Let it be because you love God. And if it's not, then evaluate yourself and ask God to convict your heart because there's something there. Man, do I, do I praise God because of the things that he's blessed me with? Of course, of course I do. Of course I give him praise for everything that I have. Do I, do I praise him? You know, for, 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 for life, for every, uh, yes, of course, but, but I praise him for who he is, not just what he's done. I praise him, the, his sovereignty and his grace and his mercy that he pours upon my life and my children. The, the, I praise him because he is the creator of the universe and he's given us all an opportunity to commune with him. Man, that, that just. Oh, that speaks to my heart. Man, I couldn't imagine giving up one of my three kids so that 
I could have a relationship with someone. I don't know. You think about that. I, I couldn't give up. I, I couldn't imagine giving up one of my children just so that I could have a relationship with somebody. Man, but he did that for us. He did that for us. That God gave his only son. And oh, Jesus Christ lived a perfect sinless life. Perfect. And laid his life down as a sacrifice for you and for me. And whenever you question your existence or your value, think about that. That God gave his son for you. Think about that. I mean, I know that we, we hear that a thousand times over. Eh. But have we gotten desensitized to it? That's, that's something that I just, I feel like we hear things so many times. And we then, we then just start to just, no, we, I know that. Yeah, I already know. I don't know. That, that statement. That God gave his only son so that you could have the life you live. That, that should have an impact on our hearts. The way that it did when we first got saved. It should never change. It should still have that same powerful impact. Every time we hear it, we should say hallelujah. Yes, glory to God. He's given me life. Uh, that's a, that's, we need to all need to ask ourselves that. Does it have that impact on us? I don't know. I don't know about you, but having a true relationship with Jesus Christ has completely and radically changed my life. Radically. I know my story is extreme and I get it. There's a lot of us who can't relate. I understand that. I do, but, you know, I said it in Columbia in one of the services. Your, your story might not be as hardcore as mine. It might not be crazy, and, you know, I, I understand that, but it doesn't mean your story is any less powerful and impactful because, see, the truth is no matter what you were doing or where you were, we were both headed in the same direction before we got saved. And that's the reality of it. That's, that's the truth. We all have this in common. And, and see, there's times that we, we need to remind ourselves of how it was so that we can better appreciate how it is. See, we can get caught up in the cares of life. We can't. We, we can get caught up and forget and, and, and actually forget how bad that it used to be. I haven't encountered many of these moments in my life over the past few years. I, man, I can't believe where I'm at. I really can. I can't believe what, what God is doing in my life. And, you know, I think about how bad it used to be waking up every morning with a hangover, with a headache and, and, and nauseous every morning, having to light a cigarette and a joint to, as soon as I wake up to feed my addiction to nicotine and weed. And, and, and there was times that I even dreaded waking up because I didn't know how I was going to get high that day because the drug dealer was out of pills. And if I didn't get pills, I was going to be sick. And there was times that I dreaded going to sleep because I was like, man, I, when I wake up, if he hasn't scored yet, I'm going to be sick all day. That was my reality. That was my day to day. That was normal for me for over 15 years of my life. Now, though. <laughs> now, though. Now I wake up and my first thought is glory to God, I'm awake. Glory to God, I'm awake. Good morning, Heavenly Father. 
Thank you, Jesus, for another day. I don't know. Your, your, your past might not be that serious. You, you might look at it like, well, I, I don't know. I never experienced that. But man, you never know if tomorrow's going to come. Be thankful. Be grateful for every day, every minute, every breath. It's a blessing. I, I thank him all the time for saving my life. And you should too. Even if you weren't into drugs and alcohol, it doesn't matter. You should thank him all the time for that. Be, be thankful. Thank him for, your, for his grace and his mercy. God, I, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for your love. I thank you for, for sending your son to be a sacrifice for me so that I could have the life that I'm now living because without that, I wouldn't be here. And that's every single one of us. Thank you so much for loving me. That you bankrupt heaven. Hallelujah. Because you wanted to be with me. He wanted to be with you. So he sent his son to die for you because he loves you that much. If you were the, uh, and this is something else that you've probably heard a hundred times, but it's so true. If you were the only person on the planet, on earth, he would have still sent his son to die for you. Man, that's, I don't know that, that just, I'm so thankful relationship relationship with him relationship with God relationship with your heavenly father there is there is nothing better there is there is nothing better and there's there's nothing that the devil can tempt you with that will fill that void within your heart if you don't have it if you don't have if you don't have the love of God if you're not filled with the holy spirit if you're not truly saved and you're on the fence there is nothing that the devil can give you that's going to fill you like him Jesus Christ gave his life gave his life for all of us I don't care how many times you hear that it should move you on the inside, it should either make your lip quiver or fill you with joy or both at the same time. The most incredible man to ever walk this earth. <laughs> He's talked about in other cultures all over the world. Every, every nation knows who he is. They all know him. They all know. Who, they all heard about Jesus Christ, the son of God. Man. Jesus had no servants, yet they called him master. Come on. He had no degree, but they called him a teacher. Mm, oh, he had no medicines. They called him a healer. I don't know. That speaks to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He never committed a crime, but he was crucified as if he was a criminal. His kingdom is not of this world, but lives within our hearts. You know, there has never been and never will be another Jesus Christ. And that's the message we should give the world. That's, that's the message. Except accepting him as your personal savior not only saves you from hell, but also saves you from the chaos of this world. You know, while the world is stressing out about gas prices and inflation and, and food costs going up, we can all look at the words of Jesus. Matthew 6, 25, 28. It's such a word for today here in America. The world around us is in chaos. Everybody's worried about the election and they're, and they're worried about inflation and they're worried about gas prices and they're worried. But 
For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky that they do not sow nor reap nor gather crops into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more important than they in which of you by worrying can add a single day to his lifespan? And why are you worried about clothing? Notice how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor nor do they spin thread for cloth. And when you are in a relationship with God, you know that troubles will come. Storms will come. Famine can happen. Tragedy will strike. But, but no matter what is happening, no matter how you look at it, it's all better with Jesus. Simple. Simple word. It's all better with Jesus. You know, when the world is spinning out of control, your life is built upon the rock, a firm foundation, and that rock is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The one who will never leave you, never forsake you, never turn his back. No matter how many times you turn your back on him, he is always there waiting with his arms wide open, ready to receive you with love, grace, and mercy. Through Christ, we have been reconciled to God. The greatest decision a person can make. So with that being said, wherever you go, whatever you do, remember that you are a child of God. Why you are here, we are ambassadors, ambassadors for Christ. I encourage you to live a life that shouts out to the world around you that life is better with Jesus. Amen.